Earlier in the module, we shared with you the mission of the Boy Scouts of America. Now our mission comes with a lot of values that we're trying to teach children. So that we have those aims that we're trying to accomplish, we have the methods that we use to accomplish those aims. So think about this for a moment. We have programs like Cub Scouting, Boy Scouting, and Venturing, and they have the same aim, but they have a different methodology for making that aim come true. So ask yourself the question, are we a program that is camping, that happens to teach values, or are we a values program that uses camping to deliver our mission to young people? We ask our scouting volunteers to do a lot of mail delivery for us. We ask them to deliver mail to young people like character, where they'll use the ideals of our oath, our law, to make it so that a child gets character. We'll have something that we deliver called citizenship, where adult role models will be the method that we'll use to pattern how it is that we and citizens in this country live. We have service to others, where some of our badges require service hours, or there'll be a service project that a PAC will do to help someone out. We ask them to deliver mail about faith, where we're going to use a chapel service at camp, or perhaps a religious emblem as the method we're going to deliver this mail. We have physical fitness that's important to us. Physical fitness where we go camping and hiking or canoeing, and we try and find a way to turn a hobby into something where a child will be physically fit. Or even the parts of the scout law, things like loyalty and trustworthy, where every week they stand up and they say our law, and then the scoutmaster tries to find a way that they can compare that law to real life. Well, I want you to imagine for just a moment that this mailbox is the mind of a child. And that mind of a child is closed a lot. And we try and deliver some of these mails like loyalty to that mind, and that mind is closed, it won't go in. So the good scouting leader has to have meetings and activities and outdoor activities so that they can have a time when that mailbox opens that child's mind opens and they can deliver that mail. Now perhaps it's that a camping trip where a young patrol leader learns that yelling isn't going to be the way to make it so that their troop, their patrol will actually wash the dishes any faster. And the scoutmaster gets to sit down and have a counseling session with them and that mailbox opens, that child's mind is open and we get to deliver the mail. Now they try and put too much in, that mind closes again. And that's why we have more than one camping trip or more than one activity, so that they can go out next week or next month and find a way to open that child's mind again. Perhaps it's building a Pinewood Derby car where they actually have to work together with their dad to do something. And dad has that opportunity to have that mind open and closed. Over a period of time, there'll be camping trips with campfires, with all sorts of activities, hikes, and things that go wrong like burnt pancakes. And every time it happens, the leader is looking for that opportunity to deliver the mail. You know, it's an amazing thing in scouting. Over a period of time, those scoutmasters are out there putting mail into a young person's mind. But there's a magic moment that happens. And that magic moment happens when a scoutmaster realizes they've delivered the mail and that the young person well, the young person has so much of that mail inside their mailbox that their flag goes up. And that means that that scout is ready to deliver the mail to another scout. That's what makes us a movement. That's what makes it so that when we have a child telling another child that it's okay to be the good guy, that we've made the dream of scouting come true. I don't think that most parents understand exactly what scouting will do for their son. You see, I don't think they understand all the opportunities that are going to be created for their son to learn about leadership or how to work with other people or how to live, live a life of service to others. I don't think they understand that we're going to deliver their mail in such a way that when their son is 12 or 13 years old, they can teach 11-year-olds 
about being trustworthy and loyal and helpful. When they turn 15, there are scouts all over the country that are learning the words to a ceremony so they can go out and 15-year-olds can teach 14-year-olds about these values and say things like, reverently Mateo bids you, henceforth keep the strictest silence. Cheerfully Nudicate bids you, do not flinch from self-denial. Kitch Kinnett will tell you of the loneliness ahead and bid you sleep apart from others. As the chieftain, I exhort you, spend the day in arduous labor, working gladly, not begrudging, seek to serve and thus be faithful. I don't think that parents understand that there are 15-year-old boys in the world who are willing to say things like that to other 11 and 12 and 13-year-olds. And that's what makes scouting so special. You see, those 15-year-olds are telling them, it's okay to love one another. It's okay to live a life of cheerful service. It's okay to take the burdens from the shoulders of their fellow man. And that's the magic of scouting. The very fact that we choose to live our lives by an oath, a law, and we have a mission to deliver that oath and law to as many young people as we possibly can.